For six years, the Shield 616 Border to Border ride has grown bigger and better every year, raising money for protective rifle rated ballistic gear for first responders across Colorado. For the last three years, I've been lucky enough to ride along, and News 5 and you, our viewers, have rallied and worked together to raise money for this important cause. This year's ride across Colorado stretched from the Utah border to the Kansas border, nearly 500 miles across five days, and our John McMichael captured the epic journey. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right, here we go. If you go from one border to the next, Utah to Kansas with Colorado in between, all in the back of a bicycle. It's gonna be fun. All on the scenic route. What here? Woo! Takes about five days, almost 500 miles, and a reason. It's all about the cause. Go through with There's it. There's nothing not to like. Well, for Shield 616 and their crew of steadfast cyclists or road-ready riders, that reason Yay! is straightforward. This ride, we've been able to impact 61 of our first responders from across the state. We're here to raise money for this gear. And not only are they going to be better protected, but they're going to be better served and they're going to be better encouraged and loved. And, you know, I'm just so thrilled to be able to do that. And so it, it's awesome. I don't know how else to describe it other than awesome. Every September for the past six years, yeah, this crew turned family. You know, I don't even refer to them as a team. It's a family. Climbs the hills, flies down the valleys, and fights through the headwinds. Don't like the wind. And an ongoing effort to protect those who are serving our community. You have a bunch of individuals who might have their own aspirations of wanting to support uh, our first responders, but when you bring it all together, it's something much more. Absolutely. We can really catch momentum here uh, when we get this many people together showing support for the, for the first responders. What you'll see is things snowball. People will step up, step alongside us, step behind our officers and show support for them by coming together as one. It's five days plus some extracurriculars that are worth following along. And you couldn't get a better place to go, you know, crossing this beautiful state. It's amazing uh, what big things a small organization can do when they put their mind to it. This year, Shield 616. Shield 616. Shield 616. Shield 616 border to border bike ride. Across Colorado is officially underway. This is an effort to help raise money to supply that protective gear to our local law enforcement and emergency responders. Again, 10 agencies, Parks and Wildlife, three fire departments. Uh, it really is a lot we're trying to get done this year, so it all begins this morning. What a wave, what a wave. <laughs> okay, we're ready, Des. Let's go. It all starts here, or more accurately, the middle of nowhere on the Utah border. We came on this isolated road, so I can hear I-70. It's over there. We're not, we're not riding on I-70. That's why we're in the middle of nowhere, Bree. With 74 miles and 1,600 feet of elevation gain ahead, day one, by all accounts, is the easy day. Clear. Okay, nobody move. But before there's forward momentum, there's a moment to look back. When you're grinding today and you're going to be grinding already, remember what's on your back. Fight through that. On three, border to border. One, two, three. Border to border. Then off they go, pedals and wheels and bike terminology, all full tilt, full of energy and full of intent. By the time lunch rolls around today and each day following, the team is always tired while still maintaining smiles, which means it's time to go to work for me it's time for some interviews. How's it going? It's going fantastic. It's going fantastic. Yeah, suffering ahead. Today, good. <sighs> Today, it's windy. And we had a never-ending hill. But it's been fun to get out on the ride with the guys again. There's something about being on a bike that you connect with people as you're kind of going through the miles. It's therapeutic. It's stress relieving um, and, and it's doing something good and trying to impact others in a way that we, we may never see, but at least we're doing what we can. What's the 
the total distance of the trip. For today, we're doing about 75 or 78. The total trip is just under 500. You could be spending your week doing almost anything, but you are choosing to be out here riding 500 miles over the next several days. Why? Well, for one thing, it's a blessing to help first responders. And to raise this money so they can get the gear that they need to protect them. Thank you, sir. They're doing a great thing for us, so I'm proud that uh, they're out here helping support uh, for the bulletproof vests. It is putting your efforts toward a, toward a cause that's that's bigger than you are, and I love it. Uh, it's fun to be a part of it. It's fun to be pulled into this kind of family, and I'm going to learn a lot in the next 450 miles or so. As the first day wraps after four hours of riding, the crew learns that the Olathe community, a town on the route, had put together a surprise. We're honored to be here with you guys, and we're honored to be here and be part of the rallying around your first responders. I can tell you now more than ever, they need to hear from their community. They need to have the support from our community. So we thank you guys for what you do, and we love you. And let's give these guys a round of applause for, for being our protectors. Money for vests for the town's law enforcement gearing up six officers. If it wasn't for them, then we would not have this equipment since smaller towns don't have as good a funding. It's one set of gifts that's good to have around. We want to make sure that when they go into the line of danger for us, that uh, they're taken care of, you know? They take care of us, so we want to do what we can to take care of them. I appreciate our field uh, 616, uh, all the riders. You know, we don't know who you are, you know, personally, but I can tell you that we have a love for you and that we would uh, that we'd do anything for you. This extra vest presentation, representing $14,000 and plenty of care, started with a phone call from Delta. I called Jake and uh, the head of Shield 616, talked to him about what he could use. He was talking about biking and border to border, and the first leg was going to stop in our neck of woods. So I said, let's put you up and we'll take care of you as a church. And then I asked about what else we could do. He talked about the fundraising. So our church kicked in uh, $10,000 of the 14,000 towards the, the vest that outfitted Olathe's police department. And it's good to see the amount of people that do have support for us, having our community come out, taking their time and their effort to do something like this for us, to give us that kind of protection that we need. So while Olathe might be a small town, this gesture is leaving a big impact. Without your support, uh, this never would have been uh, possible. We're forever going to be grateful. All in all, the presentation. Officers, let's give these guys a round of applause for donating. And following Ice Cream Social was one post-ride extracurricular that these tired riders not only didn't mind making, but it also really helped set the tone for the rest of the journey. When we come back, the border to border ride remembers Boulder officer Eric Talley and hits the heart of the Colorado high country and some of the most spectacular views ever seen on a bicycle. Ready for a nice long day. The Shield 616 border to border ride across Colorado is continuing this morning. How is everybody feeling dark and early this morning, Ira? <laughs> well, I think everybody's pretty good. The traffic is horrible. In terms of cycling terms, yesterday was a relatively easy day. How are you feeling right now? Right now, I feel like I want a nap. But we're excited <laughs> for the day, Bree. Early on, on that second day, Border to border crew okay, time to go. set out to ride through 84 miles and up 5,300 feet of elevation. It got real today, for sure. More than triple that of the day before. I understand that this is sometimes grueling, sometimes daunting. We've had snow, rain, wind. We had wind today on an uphill. And got reminded that this is a challenge. A few hours in, a road closure on Highway 50 provided a couple hours rest. How you feeling? Allowing for a chance to, you guessed it. Uh, good, now that we got to lunch. Allow the old microphone. And uh, have a little chat with John. All right. Howdy, how you doing? And really dig into figuring out how much the group had expanded since year one back in 2015. How many years been doing the trip? Five years. This is my third. Six. This is year six for me. Six years. I'm um, one of the original seven. What keeps you coming back? The camaraderie, first of all. That's definitely the biggest part. It's This feels like a family. Even on day two, I feel feel welcome. Everyone just fits right in. It really is a family out here in a way that is hard to duplicate. I, I was just thinking about the things we joke about. You missed Carrie and I just tried to give each other a pickle shot. It's like I'm at summer camp again with my buddies. It went up our noses. <laughs> like, it was like... And I don't have a care in the world. Uh, even though I know what we're doing out here and, and the reason we're out here is 
is very serious and a very grown-up thing, but it's just the way we all get along together. It's awesome. And that get along together spirit extends from the six year riders to the first year. How many years on the trip? First year. First time coming, yep. So it's all new to me. Of which there are several. Yeah, I mean, I've ridden a lot before, but not multi day. So this is a bit extra. This is quite a bit extra. Then there's tips and tricks and tools of the trade, all passed along with smiles. And I see all these veterans, <clears throat> some of them older than I am. And they're just chatting as they're going up this hill, and I'm just like, I just want to pull over right there. Just let me pull over right there for 30 seconds. And watching them go up that hill just keeps me going. Because the team wouldn't be a team without that extra effort. Everybody cheers on each other. I'm like, hey, let's go, keep going, keep going. I mean, you'll see our strong riders that will crest the top of the climbs, and then they'll turn around go down to our riders that are struggling a little more that day and help them up the up to their summit. You train for the hills, you don't train for the wind. That was soul crushing. And so it's it's always a team effort. Taking it from the original seven, seeing it grow the way that it has, how does that make you feel? Oh just amazing. It's just so neat to see it grow. Keep rolling by. It was such an amazing experience to be able to do it again and again and again. Uh, every year it just gets better. On the road again for 30 miles. Got through the construction zone. Off the road again for the evening, shutting down, resting up, getting ready. Is this Colorado or am I dream for day three? about a lot and we're hoping to raise some money today right. so let's get this ride from Gunnison over to Hartzell on the way. Day three that notorious midway point really finding a way to make a Friday feel a lot like a Wednesday had our riders gearing up for 97 more miles going up 6700 more feet of elevation but before wheeling out the crew focused in on Eric Talley. All right this morning, the Boulder officer, Eric Talley's um, story was aired on KOAA. And it's stories like this, Ira, about Officer Talley that really uh, push you guys to make it through this tough ride. A Boulder police officer shot and killed in the line of duty, responding to the King Super shooting for March of this year. Officer Talley responded to the scene, was the first on the scene, and he was fatally shot. He cared about this community. He cared about Boulder Police Department. He cared about his family and he was willing to die to protect others. These first responders will rush towards danger no matter what it is without thinking of themselves to save others. It's the same with this ballistic gear. At least it's one thing we can do to try to equip the officers. So today, we're gonna to be Tally Strong. So on three, let's do Tally Strong. Ready? One, two, three! Tally Strong! That third day had hills and climbs and hills on top of climbs. Day three! through some of the most gorgeous scenery. I can't believe how beautiful this is through here. This is just amazing. You could possibly imagine. It's so compelling. And somewhere along the tail end, there was one more hill, this time going down and around and down some more through Cottonwood Pass. Riders acting like rockets. Back and sidetracking just a bit, today really felt like the time to focus in a bit more on the team aspect, really the volunteer team aspect of the journey. They're doing a thing, they're, they're, they're riding along. They've, they've signed up to do this thing. Yeah. Sweat, this blood, is their tears. chosen form of torture. This is their chosen <laughs> form of torture. Because it's these folks who really do allow this crew to get from point A to point B in the best ways possible. There are riders who are doing probably better because they have the support of folks like you. Talk to me, why? Why are you volunteering? When you're climbing up these mountains and you've got very little energy left, somebody yelling out the window at you to keep going and keep pressing and, and reminding you why you're here is such a, a good push to get you to the top of the hill. Come on, get up here! 
we're gonna have tasks, we're gonna have duties, do the, the volunteers and the staff have to take care of, make sure everyone's at peace. So we're setting all the food out, cleaning all the food up, and then we just follow them the rest of the day. Any supplies that they need, the volunteers take care of for them, and then we get up and do it all over again the next day. What's the mentality? What's the mentality? As we're riding up and posting up at different spots, I'm thinking about what the riders are about to go through. We're constantly radioing back and forth. Oh, there you go! <laughs> so it's much more than we carry the grub, it's we're making sure these guys are safe. We're making sure they're safe. We've got guys on motorcycles that are EMTs that are running the route back and forth. And we're here for not only the medical support, but really just road safety. We're nimble so we can move in and around the pack and up and back and forward as riders need. It feels like none of this would be possible without everyone working together. Yeah. What would you think about that? I mean, it can be done. All these things can be done due to individual effort, right? But not to the degree that it can be done with all the teamwork. Right? You know, it's, it's greater than the sum of its parts, right? The whole experience that they're having. So it truly is every single person involved in the border to border, no matter what their capacity is, all of that adds up to something successful and all of that adds up to protecting lives at the end of the day. Day three wraps up with more sweat and sore legs. As the crew settles down, volunteers prep for the next ride and everyone looks forward to what comes next. When the Shield 616 Border to Border Special continues, the team remembers 20 years ago, September 11th, when so many first responders gave their lives trying to save others, and 55 first responders from all across Colorado are presented life-saving gear in Colorado Springs. Day four. It is the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Uh, we're going to be thinking about that today. We're doing things unlike any other shield ride. We uh, have loaded up. We are caravanning and shuttling back to our start spot, and then we'll get pedaling and we'll uh, be headed to the Springs. Looking forward to everything there. <laughs> it's it's been it's been a ride. It has been a ride. Day four is 90 miles and 2,900 feet of climbing. Nothing the team hasn't already tackled. It's the first three days have been gorgeous, coming through the Colorado mountains. In all my years of cycling, I've never ridden a road this gorgeous, this much variety and peace. But today is still different, as riders remember. 9-11, 343 firefighters died in the line of duty at the towers. And 20 years later, it's still hard to grasp the commitment of so many firefighters on that day to try and save some lives. We will never forget. You know, every year is as important as the last. So many ran in when everyone else was running away. Today, that's what my primary focus is and what I am pedaling and what I'm thinking about as I'm riding. It's a great day to be here with so many committed and passionate people that are interested in uh, doing some, something to serve and to protect other uh, first responders. You know, we'll be able to give 55 sets of protective armor to law enforcement and firefighters tonight. And the chance that we have to know that we've better safeguarded our first responders running towards danger like they did 20 years ago by our ex tonight by doing this ride makes it all the sweeter. As the crew heads through Woodland Park, they pick up a police escort for a few miles down 24 before riding through Colorado Springs and then out to Ellicott. The work of the day far from done as 616 prepares for the evening. Why are we doing this? Why are we issuing rifle rated gear? Well, you know, we do this for first responders. I have a lot of respect and admire those folks who are able to go in and uh, keep composure to run into danger uh, when we all run away. <laughs> this ride is a great example of how we can support them. <laughs> to know that they're all behind the mission of Shield 616, to have these guys and gals out here grinding every day. 
going up that mountain pass, thinking of those first responders that have given their all, have given their life, you know, that just touches my heart. It's a night everyone's been waiting on and one that's all about delivering ballistic gear to 10 Colorado first responder agencies. Shield 616 is donating a lot of awesome equipment to officers, including wildlife officers tonight. Talk to me reaction. How does all of this make you feel? It makes me feel great. I mean, the, the support that we get from the company and everyone that has donated is just amazing. My daughters and my son, they were worried when we didn't have the equipment that something could happen. And now they feel a little bit better. Police, fire, parks and wildlife, and sheriff's departments from around Colorado now more well protected. Every day I was riding and every day I was like biking and thinking about it, like, yeah, I'm, I'm not just doing for the equipment, I'm just actually doing for saving other officers' lives. Is this good? Oh, it's better than good, it's great. This is amazing. The work that these guys put in, the hours and phone calls and sponsors that have done this, is absolutely amazing. In all honesty, this moment, or the bundle of moments that make up this evening, really is the culmination of what this trip Thanks for going out of your way for us. is all about. If you wanted to convey one message to the folks who are, are, are putting this money out, the people who are making this happen, what would that message be? The number one message is just thank you from the bottom of my heart and from my family's heart as well. It's something that makes me feel, as a wildlife officer, that my position is needed and that it is valued and that my life does matter. We're almost to Kansas when we come back. The final 130 miles on the fifth and final day. We'll hear from the team about finishing this year's epic ride and epic fundraising efforts. As Sunday rolls around, before the sun is up, the crew is up. Well, here we go. And out. Day five. First time I've ever ridden long distance for five days in a row. Just easy on the beginning, okay, guys? Just easy. We don't want to crash. We've come a long way, so we just got a little bit more to go to finish this sucker off. A lot of emotions. Hopefully no one will uh, lose their mind between here and the... Here in the border and we'll get this done. With more than 100 miles to go, the one plus looking to the day ahead is that the ground all the way to Kansas is mostly flat. It's been a long four, now five days on the road, biking up hills into headwinds, now the long flat stretch on the way to Kansas. How are you feeling? Exhausted, excited, excited uh, that we made this accomplishment. Uh, a little sore. Yeah, so the hardest part of this ride is usually the last day. You know, we've gone, in the past it's been four days, so today would have been the fourth day, and it begins to be a mental game. It's a grind, you know. A lot of seat time, a lot of pedaling. Um, you know, we gotta finish this, we gotta finish strong. We've got about 40 miles to go, and I'm questioning, I'm not questioning if I can do it. Legs feel good. Behind feels medium. It just, uh, wow, is it ever gonna get here? This is like Christmas, waiting for Christmas or something. But uh, we're gonna do it. From here, it's all long empty roads, windmills, hay bales, and yellow fields stretching off in every direction. A couple miles away, I can't believe it. And just like that, the trip of miles and miles is done. Many miles today? 130. Or actually, just a bit more. 132. 132 miles today. Sure. We made it. Kansas Colorado border. So excited. It's the last stop for this tired but happy crew and the last stop to get mic'd up. How you feeling? Feeling okay? Feeling all right. It's the end of the trip. Excited but tired. Actually, I'm thinking about biking back to the springs. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was a lot. Yeah. As an added bonus to everything else, take a look behind you for me. The last few miles was done with an escort. <laughs> this crew lining up has done this for almost 500 miles over the past five days, raising awareness and money for uh, defensive equipment for our, our first responders. How does that make you as a first responder feel? It's great. Uh, a couple years ago, they donated a bunch of vests and rifle plates to us to wear. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And it's a vest that we all carry in our cars for dangerous situations. And so when I heard they were coming through the county, I absolutely wanted to make sure I was available for them. Thank you, Jesus. Done. Oh, done. Where's Dorothy? Yeah. See you next year. Yeah. You did it. All oh, done. Jesus, yeah. baby. Can you tell me what's going through your mind right now? Man, just a sense of victory. I'm so glad that I pushed it to the limit um, for a great cause, too. So just loving it. I want to know, how did the last stretch feel when you could barely make out the border to Kansas sign? You, you know, once we started going downhill to Kansas, I was really thankful that Colorado was taller than Kansas. What's going through your head as the trip is wrapping up? For me, as soon as we cross that sign behind me, as you can imagine, my stress level goes down. And so for me, it's always just a huge sense of relief to, to be able to pass that sign and know we, we did it successfully another year. And on top of it, we impacted a whole bunch of first responders. But that impact isn't just external. The crew of 24 walking or riding away, even tighter knit than before. This is such a wonderful family. Coming together in a time where everyone's so distant is powerful. And the family bond that we create here, the people that ride in this event, is, it goes well beyond today and this week. It, it lasts all year and beyond. Before it's all said and done, the only question left is what comes next? Would you do it again? Yes. Are you going to do it again? Yes. Yeah, who knows? They've already invited me to participate next year, so I might just buy a bicycle and get on it. Last question. Is it time to hang up the bike for a week, or are you give a planned trip for Monday? Yeah. Ah, I might do a quick spin on Monday just to shake out the soreness, because they're going to be sore. And again, maybe I'll take a week off. I'll have to get back to you. Before we're wrapped up here with this journey or story or whatever you want to call it, it feels like the best way to say goodbye is to hear the thoughts and takeaways from a tired but happy 616 family. Riding is a celebration in some respect to work together for a common good, for a common cause. Our relationships have grown through these last five days. I think it's great to, to make those human connections and interactions. This is one of the things that's really made a difference in my life and really filled my bucket. When I founded SHIELD 616, my goal was to support all of our first responders. And that means across the whole state of Colorado. Any first responder still has a very dangerous job, but we can do all we can do to give them peace of mind and to give them confidence, because they're going to run towards danger either way. It's about supporting SHIELD and these officers. Myself being a law enforcement officer, you know, I just, whenever you have that extra protection, it's a great thing. This was our record year. This was our longest ride we've ever done. We're dealing with multiple mountain passes. We're dealing with heat and, and long mileage. It's something special, and unless you come along, you're not going to understand. What do you hope people are seeing when they see this, this brigade of bikers? Well, I hope they see the unity. You know, hope that they see that there are people that support uh, the first responders, uh, that there is still people that are doing good and trying to do good and challenging themselves and enjoying doing it too. Well, we had big goals again this year, and uh, we put it to the viewers to help us. Uh, so many people helped us, Jake. Let's uh, give the viewers the final update. I am pleased to tell everybody at the Kansas border we achieved our goal. So we uh, met our goal of $60,000 in total for this year's bike ride. We were able to raise over $200,000. Not only everyone getting behind it, but We've got some pretty special viewers out there helping yep. us protect well, our protectors. That's a lot of protectors, more protected. And again, thank you so much. Small donations, medium, large, they all paid off. We can't thank you enough. And finally, reporting truly all over the state of Colorado, I'm John McMichael, News 5. Thanks to the generosity of all of you, our viewers, our station, and the Scripps Howard Foundation, we went above and beyond our fundraising goal of $60,000 and contributed $65,000 to Shield 616 to better protect our protectors across Colorado. For the entire Shield 616 team, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I'm Ira Cronin for News 5. Thanks for watching and helping make a difference. Good night.